In this episode, I'll show you how to use a colored gel to spruce up a portrait. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace, where you will learn innovative techniques on shooting a wide range of photography. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography brought to you by Adorama. As you know, Adorama is more than a camera store, it's the place that you can go to get all of your photography needs met. So make sure you check them out at adorama.com. Well, I'm Mark Wallace and today I'm going to show you how you can easily take a couple of flashes with some gels and a nice diffusion panel and take a situation like we have here, which is just a very nasty sort of warehouse situation with a garage door and an electrical outlet panel thing back there. And you can change that, make it really colorful and get a nice shot. Now first I want to show you what I have because the requirements are I want to be nice, lightweight, and really small for this. I don't have a big bag. So I just have a couple of uh, stands here. These are normal light stands with some umbrella adapters on there. I can put speed lights on these. And you don't have to have these. You can use an assistant or two if you have an assistant or two, but probably less expensive to get a stand. And then everything else is in this very small bag. This is my uh, Lowell Pro bag, and this is the Micro Trekker 100. This is a really, really small bag here. And uh, inside this bag, I have some uh, products by Rogue that we're going to be using today. And so uh, this guy right here, this is a little kit, and it's a Rogue gel kit that allows you to uh, change uh, color temperatures on your flashes or do some creative effects. So inside here, we've got greens and blues and yellows and reds, and then we have color correction filters inside of this. And so it's got pretty much anything you need as far as uh, color correction for speed lights. And it comes in this little pouch here with all kinds of stuff. I'll show you how that works in a second. And we're going to use that to take this gray, nasty background and change it to something that's really vibrant and blue. Well, inside my bag here, I have uh, a couple other things. So notice I've got this. This is my Rogue Flash Bender. And it's just totally crumpled up and just thrown into the bag. And this is what I really like about my Rogue Flash Bender because uh, a lot of times I don't have room for a soft box, even a small soft box or an umbrella when I'm traveling, but I can take this guy and just crumple it up and throw it in my bag and it is just indestructible. You can do all kinds of stuff uh, and it's just not going to uh, get hurt at all. And so it works really great. And so what this guy will allow you to do is you can use this on your flash as a bounce panel or you can put uh, a diffusion panel on the front, which is what I have here. And what this will do is it gives you a really nice small soft box. And so I'm going to uh, show you how that works. So we have this uh, Rogue stuff here that's really um, awesome. And we're gonna be using that. Well, inside my bag, I have two uh, speed lights. So I've got an, a Nikon SB900. And then I also have a Nikon SB700. And uh, the 700 is less expensive than the 900 but it allow me to do all kinds of things. Now the nice thing about the Nikon system is they allow you to set your camera on in a master mode and then put these guys in a remote mode. And so these can be triggered with a pop-up flash on a Nikon camera, which is really nice. And we're gonna be doing that. So I've got my two flashes here and then I'm gonna be shooting with a Nikon D7000. It's just a nice consumer camera with a 55 to 300 kit lens. So we're keeping everything affordable as much as possible and uh, I'll be showing you how this works as well. So there's our camera, there's our two flashes and our Rogue gear, and uh, we're gonna set this all up. Now, before we uh, get everything set up, let me first show you exactly how this Rogue equipment works. So I'm gonna take my SB900, I'm gonna throw it on my stand here, and I must have screwed this in there. Okay, there we go, this is locked on. Now the way this works is this just goes on the top of my flash, and this goes inside there, and then this just snaps on, and then ba-dam, there it is. And then I can do all kinds of things with bending that, but I have a nice small soft box on my flash, and that works. As far as the gel is concerned, to gel my flash, it's the same kind of thing. I would put this on my stand. So here it is, it's gonna go on my umbrella adapter here. I have that locked in there, just like that. Make everything secure. And what we'll do is, to gel this light, it's very, very simple. All we have to do is take one of the gels out of my kit. I'm gonna use this. Uh, this is a uh, just blue filter. And inside the kit, there's this little rubber band thing here, and there's really no bells and whistles. All you have to do is take the rubber band and put it over the gel on your flash, and that holds it on there, and everything works out just great. Now, the nice thing about this 
is you can use this with almost any size of speed light. So if you've got a really large speed light, a really small speed light, it doesn't really matter. These gels are going to work just fine. And it only takes a couple seconds to put those on there, and then you're set to go. So we have our gelled flash, we have our diffused flash, everything is set up. Now the next thing we need is somebody to shoot. So Sharon, come on out. And uh, this is Sharon, she is going to be our model. And notice that we have a nice red shirt, and we've used a blue diffusion, I mean, a blue gel on this flash. And so we've done this on purpose to make sure that you stand out from this blue background that we're going to create. Well, now that we know all of that stuff, let's set everything up and walk through how we do this. All right, well, we're out here and Sharon is in position and what we wanna do is get a great shot without having the background just looking totally gray and drab. So the key to this photo is to first isolate you from all the ambient light. The second thing we're gonna do is make sure that we add some color to the background and I don't know if you've noticed, but we're all primary colors, red, yellow, and blue back there. And then last, we want to make sure that we have a really nice soft light on you. And this is going to take this drab uh, situation and make it look a little bit punchier. So let me show you how I have everything set up. So right here, we have a speed light. This is a uh, Nikon SB900, and it has our rogue flash bender with a diffusion panel on the front. So this is going to give us really nice soft light on Sharon. And back here, we have another speed light. And this is a Nikon SB700. And on this, we have our gel. And uh, so this is the gel I showed you earlier. And this is just a blue gel. And uh, what this will do is it's going to cast a blue light on the back here. And because we planned everything, we have red against blue, and this is going to look great. So now that you know where our lights are, it's a very, very simple setup. We need to know how we trigger those lights. And that is done simply with our Nikon D7000 with the pop-up flash. You can set this to uh, the commander mode and then each of your uh, remote speed lights, you just put them on the remote mode and then this flash will tell those flashes to fire and that's really all we have to do. Now when I take a picture, then my, both of my speed lights will fire and everything works great. We can just use the built-in functionality of our Nikon camera. Now what we're gonna do next is take a few pictures and I'll show you how we're gonna control the ambient light and make sure that everything looks perfect. Well, before we start shooting, let me tell you exactly how I have things set up. My flashes, my remote flashes, I've just put them into remote mode, but I've left them on auto, so they're going to use their normal TTL metering function to figure out how much light they should throw out. Now, that's important because our camera is going to be set in manual mode. Now, I know what you're saying. You're saying, Mark, I don't know how to shoot in manual mode, but that's okay. We don't really uh, need to know how to shoot in manual mode, but we need to make sure our camera's set in manual mode because we need to make sure that we don't get any of this ambient light. And in any of the auto modes, the camera is going to automatically try to expose the ambient light correctly and then just use our flashes for fill. But we don't want that. We want our flashes to be the primary light and we don't want any ambient light at all. So what we're going to do is I have my camera set to full manual mode. I have it set to ISO 100 and so it's a really low ISO so it's not very sensitive to light. I've put my shutter speed all the way up to 200 and I set my aperture value to 10. Why? Well, at 200, my flashes are going to still behave really nice and well. Anything over that, you might run into something called high-speed sync or FP sync. We don't want to worry about that. So keep your shutter speed around 200. And then my aperture value is at 10. Why 10? Well, I want to make sure that it is closed down enough to get um, everything in focus as well as no ambient light. So I'm going to take a picture really fast. And so, Sharon, I want you to sort of wave your hands around. And we're going to prove the point. I'm going to take a picture with these settings and I'm going to take a picture with no flashes. And I do that. And when I look at my camera, you can see there's nothing there. It's totally black. What does that mean? It means that at these settings, we have no ambient light at all. The only light that the camera is going to see is the light that's coming from the flash, which is what we want because we want to shape that light. Now, because I have my light set up the way I do, we're gonna get nice soft light on Sharon and on the background, we're gonna get nice blue light. So what I'll do next is I'll turn on my pop-up flash. Now, I'm using the built-in commander mode on this camera. Your camera might not have that, so you might wanna use a Pocket Wizard Mini and Flex or a Plus 3 or some other radio trigger to trigger remote flashes. But for this, I'm just gonna use the built-in system because it works just great. Now that I have that set, I'm in manual mode. I'm at a shutter speed of 200. I'm in F10. This has popped up. I've turned on my commander mode to make sure that those uh, flashes will fire. I'm just going to take a picture and we'll see what we get. 
So look right at me, give me a big smile. Perfect. Look at that. A super easy setup. She looks great. The background looks more interesting. It's not just all drab. We've got some colors that really match and things look great. So a super easy setup. We can do that. We can pack everything in a small bag and get some great looks. Well, thanks Sharon, that was a lot of fun. We were able to do something that was really simple, but effective. Now, I know that I skipped over a little bit when I was talking about how to turn on the remote flashes, but that's the beauty of Adorama and Adorama TV because we have tutorials about that. Specifically, check out the Adorama Learning Center for steps on shooting with remote flashes, remote speed lights, both Nikon and Canon. You'll find that information at adorama.com and then just check out the Adorama Learning Center. And don't forget, we have hundreds, hundreds of videos on Adorama TV and we don't want you to miss a single episode and so you should subscribe. There's a subscribe button right here. It's right, do you see it? Right there is the subscribe button. Everybody should push the subscribe button. And if you don't, then you're gonna lose out on awesome stuff. And so, whoa, it just moved. It's right here now. There's a subscribe button right there. So uh, make sure you subscribe before it moves. Or, whoa, there it goes. Oh yeah, okay. Anyway, there it is. Make sure you push the subscribe button. We'll see you next time. An electoral, electrical, blah. <laughs> and I have my camera set to. Did you guys hear that? Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.